All right, I'm sure many of you guys have heard the news by now. Dragon, one of the rare Hopkins looping coasters. There's only like five of them now, I believe. Well, Dragon at Adventureland is being removed, as we speak, actually. Um, just kind of out of nowhere, they physically started dismantling this coaster. Dragon is no more, and Adventureland also posted on their Facebook page this very interesting photo of a knight slaying a dragon. You know, obviously, this is a teaser. It even says, coming in 2021, dot, 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 dot. So, they're obviously teasing a new attraction for 2021. This is really weird, it just kind of came out of nowhere, and it seems like it could be a very last minute thing, seeing as the park is supposed to be opening up for the season at some point in the near future, and they're just now starting to remove this ride. Like I said, it's a rare Hopkins coaster, has two inversions, 2,250 feet of track, 90 feet tall, 85 foot drop, I've basically heard all bad things about this ride. Nobody really had anything very good to say about it from the people that actually wrote it. Certainly one I would have liked to have gotten to experience myself. There are a few other Hopkins coasters still out there though that you can still ride, so there's that. But anyway, moving on to the point of this video, I just wanted to give my thoughts real quick as to what I think could potentially replace this, or rather, what I think would be a good fit for a replacement for this. I'm going to talk about several different options. A lot of these are ones a lot of other people are talking about as well and for very good reason and we'll go over those reasons, don't worry. Here's the thing, they're removing Dragon. This is one of the park's signature rides. It's very picturesque. It's an icon for the park. It's really a beautiful looking ride. It goes over the water. It's actually a really, really cool looking coaster. Probably one of the coolest looking coasters out there. So it is an icon for the park. I do feel like the replacement is going to have to be something substantial, something worthy of putting in the dragon spot. I don't think they're just going to take this out and just put in like a generic family ride or anything like that. I think it's going to be, especially since they're teasing now and they're removing this ride so quick, it looks like they're trying to do prep work for whatever that new attraction is to get started on that. So basically, do I think this is going to be a new coaster for the park? Yeah, I pretty much think this is probably going to be some sort of new coaster. I think it's very likely. That's certainly what I would like for it to be. And I have to say, Adventureland in Iowa, it's a park I've always wanted to go to. I really want to go to this park. It's a great looking place. I've heard some really good things about it, actually. It seems like one of those kind of underrated gems out there. Now, let's talk about what they've received recently. In 2016, they received the Gerslauer Infinity Coaster, known as Monster, and I've heard many good things about that. That is undoubtedly the star attraction of the park, and it looks like a great coaster, honestly. And then in 2019, they added a Mauer Spinning Coaster. I've ridden a clone of this at Waldemere. It's called Steel Dragon at Waldemere, but the one here is called Phoenix, and it's a great ride. These are really good investments for this park, so to see them investing into so many coasters like this, now they're removing Dragon, it looks like they might get another coaster, that's a pretty exciting thing to think about. So let's get into the different options here. What do I think could be replacing Dragon? Well, let's talk about the Chance Hyper GTX. There's only one of these. It's at Kentucky Kingdom. Lightning Run. Looks like an amazing ride. I hear great reviews. Pretty much everybody has amazing things to say about it. And it's really an enigma why more parks have not added one of these because they're small, compact, cheap. They provide tons of thrills in a small footprint. It just makes a lot of sense. And it would make a lot of sense for this park. It would definitely give them a good airtime machine. I think they could use an airtime machine. They don't have that right now. So a Chance Hyper GTX would definitely fill that slot very well. Next we have the Premier Ride Skyrocket 2. You guys know what these are. These are found in quite a few parks. They're a clone model, and I haven't been on one myself, but they look awesome, and I hear mostly pretty good things about these. And this is another thing that would fit this park very well, and it would be one of their signature attractions for sure. It would give them a launch coaster, because they don't have a launch coaster. This would also definitely work really well, and of course it takes up a very small footprint. It would definitely fit on that plot of land very well. Well, it definitely fits, and it would be within their price range, I'm sure. Next, we have the cliche suggestion that, I, I have to say this, you know, it, for every small park that looks to be getting a new coaster, they need to get an RMC Raptor, right? I mean, every park, they're rumored to get an RMC Raptor. But this is definitely a park that these coasters are aimed towards, and it would definitely fit very well here. Of course, these are 
small, very compact, very, very thrilling. They have tons of airtime and versions. You would replace Dragon with another looping coaster, so you'd have a high thrill coaster with inversions. You'd have an airtime machine. The price for these is very low, just like all of these options are. I mean, I've taken that into consideration. I'm thinking of realistic things for this park to get. The price would probably be good for this park. And overall, a Raptor would be absolutely phenomenal to see at Adventureland. I mean, any park would be lucky to get an RMC of any kind. Uh, and these Raptors just get rave reviews. Yeah, I definitely think a Raptor would be a very good fit. And if it does turn out to be a Raptor, it could be a custom layout because I guess RMC has apparently sold all of the, the clones. Um, they sold that one for really cheap at IAPA, which appears to be that one in South Dakota. So this could be a custom layout, which is pretty cool to think about too. Even if it is a clone though, it's an RMC, so there's not really anything to complain about. Next up, I'm going to talk about Vacoma. Vacoma has tons of new models that would be amazing for this park. Once again, bang for your buck, high thrill. Some of them are very compact, take up small footprints. They also have larger models. They have a lot of variety. They have so many different choices that these parks can choose from. I mean, there's the Bermuda Blitz, the Firestorm, the Space Warp, the new suspended thrill coaster, now, there's so many options that they could go for with Vacoma, and honestly, I would like to see any one of these come to an American park. These new generation high thrill Vacoma coasters, they look so good, I've heard amazing things about them, and any one of these models would be an amazing fit for this park. And just picture something like maybe one of the new suspended thrill coasters just gliding over the water there where Dragon used to sit, that would be so beautiful as well. But any of these new Vacomas would be an amazing fit for this park, for sure. One problem with Vacoma that comes to mind, Vacoma is owned by SNS Sansei Technologies, and it seems like they've kind of divided up the operations, and it seems like they're having SNS take on like the American projects, and Vacoma is taking on the international stuff. So we haven't seen any of these new high thrill Vacoma coasters in the United States yet. We did see Dragonflyer at Dollywood last year which is one of the family suspended coasters, great ride. But it seems like Vacoma is more focused on the international market. So maybe as an alternative to Vacoma, they could go with SNS. And I'm sure SNS could do something really great for this park as well. Of course, we saw Steel Curtain open last year. Maybe they would do like a more compact version of that ride. It probably wouldn't be a huge hyper coaster, but maybe something a little over 100 feet tall with a few inversions, maybe some airtime moments. Or maybe they just have SNS build them an airtime focused coaster. Or maybe they get an air compressed launch coaster. Imagine a ride like Max Force coming to this park. Now that would be incredible. I believe pretty much all of these SNS coasters are going to be fairly cheap as well. Maybe not as cheap as some of the other options that I mentioned, but it would likely fall within their price range, I think. So those are all my options. Options that I kind of thought of, the ones that immediately come to my mind and scream, this would be perfect for Adventureland. I think they need another high thrill coaster to replace Dragon, possibly something with inversions. They definitely need something with good airtime, I think. So that would be awesome to see something that has amazing airtime and possibly even throws in an inversion or two. And even a launch, if they could incorporate a launch, you know, that would be great. Maybe a launched Vacoma. I think personally, if I had to pick one of them, I would like to see another one of the Hyper GTX coasters, but I really, really, really want to see some of those new generation Vacomas come to America. So maybe I would go with a Vacoma model. But what do you guys think? What do you think Adventureland is going to receive for 2021? I imagine we'll probably hear some kind of announcement in the next two or three months. They are teasing for it. They are apparently getting a new attraction for 2021. This is really exciting. Let me know what you think, and I will see you guys next time. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.